Hey everyone, Jarek Robbins here with my beautiful wife. Wait a second. There we go. My beautiful wife, Amanda Robbins. Um, today we're talking about reason number four. So this week we've been focused on our top five reasons. Oh. Uh, there we go. I click go live. Now we're live on Instagram too. Hey, Instagram. Oh, I did it too. There okay. we go. Um, so that we've been focused on our top five reasons why our favorite reasons why to get certified as a performance coach. Reason number one was the ability to work from anywhere. We talked about working from Costa Rica in the jungle. My wife is working at the tree house up in the jungle here in Puerto Rico. Um, we've worked on cruise ships when I remember doing a coaching call from the balcony off the coast of Monaco. It's wildly flexible of where you could work. Uh, number two, making impactful change making change and, and helping people make changes in their life where really, really matters and makes a valuable lasting difference. Number three was career flexibility. So the ability to focus on your passions. And today, number four, drum roll, give it some fireworks. Hey, where's my, oh, I got a thumbs up. Where's my fireworks? Oh, there's the fireworks. Uh, drum roll today is continuous learning, staying at the forefront of coaching methodologies and personal development to ensure both you and your clients grow. So quick question, my love. Wait, um, hold on. What was it? Continuous learning. Oh, yes. <laughs> so That's talk one of my favorite part. part. Talk me through it. Why okay. is this your favorite part? All right. I love the continuous learning component of becoming a performance coach because when I think back to what I knew starting out my career and even my first leadership role, mm -hmm. I was just scratching the surface. And yeah. as we continue to learn and learning, I think sometimes we think it comes from just life experience. And there's a lot of great insight that can come from life experience. If you're taking note, some people don't take note. But if you're choosing to learn from life experiences, not only yours, but others, there's a lot to learn. However, when you invest in yourself to learn a new skill set, yep. it elevates your identity in such a way. You have this new identity, right? Like if you um, take yoga teacher training, you're now a yoga teacher, or you could be, right? If you take a performance coach training, you're now a coach and you actually understand how to unlock performance and potential in someone. And up until taking a training, you only have probably what's been mentored or, you know, taught to you um, from work experience or your life experience, or maybe you've, you've read a book here or there, an article or watched a video. But when you immerse yourself into learning a new skill set, you now have this new identity. And that is so magical. Like I was just thinking, I love this topic because I was literally just thinking today about this, I was talking with this um, this beautiful human. Uh, they're up in Canada, this group. And someone I was speaking to from the organization, they're building out a leadership program and, a, and specifically coaching. So their leaders are better coaches. And I was thinking, these tools are gonna change your whole company in the best way ever, your leaders in the best way ever. And so anyway, we're working out this, uh, how to work with them, right? And I was just thinking, had I had access to this when I was helping train leaders, when I was leading a team, when I was developing a course or um, rather a training program for my team and really trying to lead them to perform at their very best, if I had done it with what I knew then, it would be okay. It would have been my best shot, right? But when you actually invest in yourself, in time, money, energy, effort, resources, community, like you really pour into yourself to upgrade your skill set. It it empowers, it not only empowers, it like elevates your identity of, of your capability and your um all the things that you can do. I'm running out of words here, but I think you maybe you can help me <laughs> explain. <laughs> you must be hungry. Um, here's the question. So each session we've done this week, we've given away 
a prize, an opportunity to earn something. We've given away a $500 discount to Performance Coach University certification. We've given away three months access to our core four community. Um, what else? What Yesterday we- was a uh, micro business training on oh. helping get clear on who you want to coach. Yesterday was a micro business training. Uh, what will today's giveaway be? Are you going to put me on the spot right now? Yeah. We got to think of something good. Uh, One of our favorite. Oh, I know. We can um, send one of our. I don't know. I can't decide. Okay. How about this? Uh, A signed copy of. Don't tell them what it is. Best selling book. Live it. And. What's wrong with live it? I I love it. Oh, no, I was, I was like, mm-hmm. may, let that be the surprise. It's one of our absolute favorites. It's incredible. I love that book. Are you kidding me? Okay. I'll do two. A signed copy of my number one bestselling book, Live It, and a surprise one of our favorite books. We'll put it in the same package. We'll mail it out to you anywhere in the world. Uh, how you can win a copy of these two books, one surprise and one of our books, is comment in the whatever platform you're watching on, whether you're live on Instagram with us or YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, wherever you're watching, here's here's the question. What is something you wish you would have learned sooner in life? Mm. What is something you wish you would have learned sooner in life? That's the question for this specific live today. If you answer that question, and one more time, it's what is something you wish you would have learned sooner in life? Um, We'll go through the comments. We will pick one, and we will mail you both a signed copy of our best-selling book, Live It, and a surprise one of our favorite books. What about you? What's What's one thing you wish you would have learned sooner? What's something I wish I would have learned sooner? Um... While I'm thinking about that, I'll, I'll sh- ooh, I love this one. That friends and family are not always your biggest supporters. Ooh. That saying no is okay. That's a big one. Being able to say no is okay. That's a, that's a great one. What is something you wish you would have learned sooner in life? Um, I'll tell you, the number one thing I heard growing up when I'd go to events, I'd be in the spaces where people l- are learning tools like we have in Performance Coach University. Um, the number one thing I'd hear growing up from people is, wow, you're so lucky you're learning this so young. I wish I would have learned this sooner in my life. These tools, these skills, these frameworks, these strategies, it's the most consistent thing I hear is, I wish I would have learned this sooner. And I asked them, what would have been different in your life if you would have known these tools when you first started your career, when you were in school, when you first became a parent, when you first got into a relationship? Like, What would have been different if you would have known these types of tools and strategies, how to better communicate, how to make effective decisions, understanding why people do what they do and how to understand their inspiration and motivation and also how to meet their needs at a higher level. And every single person I ask this question to always shares like, wow, it will ended up not only the results would have been different, but the experience of it would have been a different universe. I wouldn't have had as many bumps and headaches and frustrations and arguments and painful life lessons trying to teach me this stuff because if I would have known how to navigate it better, uh, I wouldn't have had to hit so many speed bumps on the journey. Let's see. Gita says, I wish I would have learned to be more mindful and grateful while going through the journey of life. Um, I wish I would have learned having healthy boundaries is a must. I wish I would have learned how to manage my money and self-love I see coming through. I wish I would have learned spend time doing things you love. There's always time for work from John. I wish I would have learned to put God first in all that I do. There's so many lessons, so many lessons. Um, but again, the most consistent thing I've heard from people is I wish I would have learned these tools sooner. 
communication, mental resilience, understanding people's motivations and drives of why they do what they do, um, how to make powerful decisions, time management and accountability for peak performance. Like I wish I would have learned these tools sooner. Uh, so my hope is if you're watching today, that feeling, and let me ask you for all those, you know, John N Nadra, all the people who answered that question, um, what would have been different in your life if you would have learned these tools sooner? Would it have, would you have been able to navigate the path easier? Would you have hit less speed bumps? Would it have just felt better? Would you have gotten to a result faster? What would have been different if you did have these tools sooner? Um, that's always the follow-up question I ask to what do you wish you would have learned sooner? So I'm curious to see. Love, what do you wish you would have learned sooner? The, I mean, one of the things that comes first to my mind, like what I wish I would have learned sooner in life, mm -hmm. without a doubt, are these specific coaching tools. Like not just any coaching tools, because I've taken other coaching programs, but specifically Performance Coach University coaching tools, because they're so transformative in the way that they truly make someone more mentally and emotionally resilient. So you you know, life can throw anything their way and they're able to handle it um, with such grace and fortitude and resilience to get through it and to come out better the other side with incredible, with, with such strength. Right. Um, and what that would have done for me, I think of when I was when I was leading a team in my twenties, like early in my career. And I remember like I was doing, I was a really great kind of like pep talker and really great, like at changing someone's kind of mindset. But again, I was only scratching the surface. And I remember um, kind of overhearing, <laughs> I'm going to brag about you for a minute. I remember overhearing uh, bits and pieces of either coaching conversation or we are talking about it. And one thing that really stuck out to me was when we talked a little bit about that conversation together, I had said, well, what about this? And what about that? And I, that was the moment when I realized like I was only serving at a surface level because the way you were able to explain to me something from a psychological perspective, from a true human performance perspective, from the the way our brains are wired and the why we do the things that we do that i was only scratching the surface and i could see like the coaching skill set that you had you were able to go so much deeper into their their conscious or subconscious mind to ha truly help them unravel whatever it was they were working through or to actually tap into the highest potential of themselves and i remember thinking like ah, I thought I was really helping people. And I was, I was helping people, but I wasn't helping people in a way that created lasting transformation and change. Like I, I have no doubt that people were like, Amanda was great to work with. She was a great leader, loved working with her. She was the best to be around. Like we'd love to work together again. And I know that I could have had an even greater impact, whether it was in my and the work that I was doing or the teams that I was leading, or it was in the organizations I was volunteering with, like Make-A-Wish and so forth, because there's a lot of struggle that they go through. And and even more so, um, it's important to remember that the people around us, like not everyone communicates when they're going through a hard time. And I think of the people that I know that have like, you know, whether it's people from high school or, or even in uh, like new people I've met, and you hear about people, whether it's like, the real hardships that they're going through and the vices they're turning to, to help cope with them, but they're not actually sharing what's going on in the world. You can just tell. Um, and sometimes you can't, but what's beautiful is that when you apply these skills and these frameworks and tools to your own life, you elevate, you amplify this force for good in the world that permeates into all those around you in such a way where they start to see the light again. They start to remember why they're here and their reason for being. They remember their, what they're capable of. Um, you are able to remind them of that with these coaching tools. And whether it's because you're directly coaching them or it's because you've applied them to your life and you are amplifying that out into the world, 
that undoubtedly is the thing I wish um, I would have learned earlier. It would have paid, it just would have allowed me to have an even bigger impact in people's lives and their well being, their performance, their potential. Um, yeah. I think there's something important about what you were just sharing. I have a friend who we hang out. He's hired me to work with him. He's hired me to work with his companies. Um, incredible human over the years, probably 13 years now. And he always used to say the same thing every time we'd hang out. He said, I'm a better person when you're around. And my perception of self, I think I'm fun and goofy and smart and hardworking and all these things. And the, the thing that you're describing is when a person is taking these tools and applying them to their own life, they're constantly learning. They're seeking ways to be better. They have a feedback loop set up, meaning after every attempt at something, they ask, what worked? What did I learn? What could be better? And then they come up with a plan of how to implement what they've identified. Wow. Bless you. Thanks. What happens is what you described in that feedback loop, that becomes contagious. Yeah. Because when you're standing next to someone, you're like, oh, yeah, we did great. And they said, yeah, we did do great. What really worked? And you're like, well, well, this worked and that worked. Yeah. Where do you think we could have been better? Well, I don't know. It was great. I know. But if there was something we could have done better, what could we have done better? Well, it might be this or this or this. Okay, great. Let's do it again and let's try those things. The nature of knowing that feedback loop structure that's very natural in conversation, all of a sudden takes someone that would have just been happy with how it went and it provides a space where they actually just did another round and got better the second or third or fourth round. And that becomes a natural part of the conversation. The other piece, I noticed someone said, I would have enjoyed the process a lot more. The mm. other piece is just That's like okay. having that feedback loop of what worked, where could we improve, how could we, you know, and what's our plan to do it. We might throw in something fun like in our plan to improve it, how could we enjoy it 5% more? How could we do 10% better and enjoy it 10% more? Like by adding in those little adjustments, you can actually increase both the performance and the fulfillment or the joy of the process of doing it. And, and it's literally just foundational coaching tools that allow people to stay a continuous learner. Um, I have a process I built. Your mic is going out a little bit, I think. I just moved away from it. Oh. Um but I have a process I built that talks about how to really optimize your performance. Let me bring it on the screen real quick. Um, and I, I just spent time building this out. And I thought about like with all the clients I've worked with, whether they're special operators or NFL athletes or Olympians or all the people I've worked with, like what are the things that they do? If they really want to achieve peak performance, what have they done? And what I found is number one, whatever they're focused on, they have a North Star vision. They have something that they are committed to working towards, let's say 10 years out in the future. Matthew McConaughey in his famous speech says, my hero is me 10 years from now. Someone came back 10 years and said, are you your hero? And he goes, oh God, no. My hero's always 10 years out in front of me showing me what I can aspire to be. So that concept that they have a North Star vision, something they aspire to go to. Number two, they have goals. They have a yellow brick road that gets them to that vision, that gets them on the road to Oz. Number three, they have habits, daily rhythms they use every single day to stay at their best and keep maintaining progress. Number three, or number four, they've made it easy to activate, easy, fun, and accessible. They can quickly get into motion and, and do it. Number five, they have a big burning purpose and desire why that's bigger than just themselves. Number six, they have rocket fuel, which is they've been able to mentally create pain if I don't, pleasure if I do, pain if I don't, pleasure if I do, to drive themselves to action on the days and in the times when they don't even feel like doing it, they still show up and do it. People call that discipline. I call that the ability to use your own mind to drive yourself to action when needed. Um, number seven, they measure. They know the trend. They know how they're trending this week, this day, this year, exactly what their trend is and how they can adjust their approach to make it improve. 
Uh, next up, they've set up their environment to win. A lot of us don't realize the environment around us, huge. if you're trying to lose 10 pounds and every time you open the cover, you've got ho-hos and ding-dongs and Twinkies and everything else, that's hard to win. If you open the cover and all you have is healthy, nutritious, live foods that support you in doing what you're trying to do, it makes it easier to win. Have you surrounded yourself with people who want you to win? It's much harder to try to win at life when everyone around you is telling you, you're too slow, you're not smart enough, it ain't going to work, give up, quit now, what are you thinking? Versus if you have a group of people around you that are challenging you to be better, that believe in you, that are that, that push you, that coach you, that guide you, that support you, that, that really are there for you, it's much easier to succeed. Which brings us to the next step, which is the 33% rule. 33% rule meaning have you purposefully curated your peers? 33% are ahead of you you can learn from. 33% are at the same pace that you can trade secrets with. 33% are a step behind you you can share and help them catch up. Final few, and I'm going to get to the most important one. Um, optimize. Have you been able to learn how to do more with less effort? Have you mastered your craft so you can do more with less effort? Have you mastered the concept of pit stops? How far and how fast can you go before you need to stop and refuel and get back to your best self? And what does a refuel look like? Identity. Have you become someone who is successful? Have you become someone who is an Olympian? Have you become someone who is a great parent or lover or whatever it is you're focused on? Final three. Have you learned to access the flow state when you're in your craft where time disappears, you disappear and nothing else matters? Finally, have you mastered your craft where every time you push the button, you get the result? Every time you partake in the activity, you get the result you desire. And the ultimate peak of people who've absolutely mastered high performance in whatever they're doing is they become an eternal student of their craft. Meaning, no matter how good they are, no matter how much they've accomplished, no matter how many gold medals they have, no matter how many trophies and how many awards and how much of everything they've already accomplished, they are an eternal student of craving to learn more or relearn the stuff they already know in a new way or become a new person themselves and evolve as a human and then go relearn the tool and see how it applies to this stage of their life. They are hungry to always be learning more. It's the most important trait I've seen of high performers. How, how long was that list? Um, one second. That's a great list. I want that checklist. It's a whole program. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 pieces to high performance. So I've, and where that came from was me reverse engineering, just looking at the highest performing clients I've worked with over the years. And I literally, someone asked me like, is there a process everyone does? Is there a thing they all do? And I said, I don't know. And I went back and just reverse engineered what's the work all of them did. And those were the 15 things. It, they were, those 15 things were present in every single one of them. Love it. All right. Okay. We got to wrap up. Thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to win a signed copy of our best-selling book and a very surprised book that we'll, we're one of a surprise book of one of our favorites, all you have to do is answer the question in the comments on any platform you're watching, which is what is something you wish you would, would have learned sooner? Answer that question. Leave it in the comments for us. We'll pick a winner and send out those books. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Where's my fireworks? Fireworks. Oh, happy post Valentine's Day. There's some love. See you later. Confetti. Ta-da. Okay, I'm done. I think it works when you say it.